At the conclusion of the first video about the mesmograph, I promised to shoot some more footage of different gear combinations and the traces they create. First up, something a little simple. I have a 36 toothed pinion gear driving a 74 toothed gear on which the magnets are positioned that will create the image. As always, the outer main gear is 150 teeth for this setup. The reason I'm using a pinion gear is that if this gear was positioned to be driven by, uh, off of these teeth, it produces a rather boring looking ellipses. By moving it to the center, the uh, lines that the, uh, will be created in the sand will intersect uh, more often and create a more interesting image. For my setup, I found a one and a half inch diameter chrome steel ball works the best. If it's any larger, the width of the furrows it makes tends to be so wide it erases a lot of the fine detail from the previous tracks. If it's any smaller, the hills don't have sharp peaks and they look a little rough. So, let's see what we get. Well, this looks like it could be interesting. Let's fire it up to uh, 64 times normal speed and see how it develops. Okay, this came out nice. Now what I'm going to do is make a small change to the gears inside and see how it affects the image. Take note that these large loops are going around the circle. They enclose the circle. What I'm going to do is move this gear closer to the outside but I'm still having it driven by the pinion gear. Let's see what this does. And here we go. We can see right off it's going to be larger in diameter. It's closer to the edge. and that the loops aren't enclosing the center. So we should still end up with a ring in the center, but the loops will be on the outside. Let's speed it up and see what happens. And that's it. What I like about this pattern is that the herringbone or chevron areas are very large and easy to define. Let's try something else. The pattern the mesmograph makes is determined not only by the ratio of the uh, number of teeth in the drive gear to the main gear, the position of the magnet along the arm, whether the, uh, the fixed pivot is on the gear or on uh, this position, but also by the angle the arm makes relative to the diameter of the primary gear. For example, right now the center of the turntable is right here and the arm moves pretty much left or right 
over the, uh, the, the center pivot point. If we move this this way, now the arm is going to be swinging back and forth off to one side and it can have a significant effect on what the pattern looks like. Let's see what this does and then we'll change to uh, this side and we'll see how it changes. If the lines appear much sharper than they have in the past, it's because I've switched to a 220 grit aluminum oxide powder, which is much smaller than the fine sand and produces better lines. All right, that was pretty good. But now let's switch this to this position and see what that does to the image. For the final image, I have a guessing game for you. There's a 60 tooth gear here with five balls on it and in three posts, each with a ball on it, attached to the main turntable. Can you guess what shape this, this is going to make? Let's see if you got it right. Well, I hope you liked this one. Thanks again for watching.